All right, time to go teach. Hello and welcome to this next episode of Tutor Tutors, continuing our unit on genetics. And today we are going to be looking at classical genetics. We're going to be looking at a historical figure named Gregor Mendel and what research he did and how he tracked the way that traits moved from the parents to the offspring. So today, targets, first off, is gain a little bit of understanding of heredity, that process of passing genes from the parent to the offspring. And we're going to distinguish between two different terms, genotype and phenotype. So let's get started. First off, it's a little bit of vocab. We need to understand what a parent is. A parent, that is the organism that is going to provide the genetic information or the genetic material that will be in the offspring. Next, the offspring, that is the organism that received the genetic material from the parent. It inherited that genetic material. And each transfer of genetic material would be a generation. So a generation is going from the parents to the offspring, and then the offspring's offspring, and then the offspring's offspring's offspring. Each level would be a generation. It's a step in descent. And we have certain terms that we could use. We have P generation, that is the parental generation. We have the F1 generation, which stands for the first filial generation. And that would be the offspring from the parental generation. And then the offspring from the F1 generation would be the F2 generation. And that would be the one way that we can look at it. So if we're ever talking about the F2 generation, that is the F1's offspring. And if we are talking about the F1, that is the offspring of the parental generation, which would be our first generation. When we look at this and we look at genetics, we are going to go about looking at it from generation to generation to generation. We are looking at how the certain traits or certain alleles were passed from parent to F1 to F2. That is the goal. Early observations were done using plants because plants were really easy to maintain. And to be honest, it was really easy to make sure that you knew which plant was mating with which plant. Because plants can't get up and walk, they can't fly around, and you could also self-pollinate a plant. In other words, the plant could mate with itself. And the most famous of these would be the pea plant as seen by Gregor Mendel, who did research on pea plants in Austria, where he was a monk. And it's through his research that we are able to understand the process of heredity or of passing down genes from parent to offspring today. So he started off in one of his experiments, he started off with true breeding parental plants where they had yellow peas and they had green peas. So his parentals were always reproducing as the exact same type. He had a group of pea plants that always produced yellow peas. And he had another group of pea plants that always produced green peas. And then what he did is he crossed them. That means he mated them together and looked at the offspring, which were all yellow. The entire F1 generation was full of yellow peas. There was not a single green pea present. And then he crossed the F1 generation with the itself, and he ended up looking at the F2 generation where it was a lot of yellow peas, but the green peas came back. All of a sudden, he had green peas again. Now, he didn't have a lot of them, but they appeared in the next generation. So even though he only mated yellow peas with each other, he ended up with some green peas in his offspring. And that led him to recognize some things about his peas. And he didn't do this once, he didn't do this twice. He noticed out of 8,023 seeds that in the F2 generation, 2,001 were green and 6,022 were yellow, which gives about a three to one ratio of yellow to green. In other words, about 25% were green and 75% were yellow. And through this, he was able to make some very, very important conclusions. 
the first thing he noticed is that there must be two forms for each trait. The trait was the color of the pea seed itself. So that would be the gene. The gene is for the color. The allele, well, there were two different alleles. It was either a green allele or a yellow allele. And he referred to them as being recessive and dominant. The recessive allele would be the green allele because it was able to be hidden, and the yellow allele must have been the dominant allele. And so, it brings us to a little bit of vocab. It takes us to genotype and phenotype. Genotype are the actual alleles that an organism has. What alleles are present within an organism? The phenotype is what trait is being expressed. How is that trait being expressed? The genotype for the peas would be the alleles that they had. The phenotype would be the color that they actually showed. And that would be the trait. Continuing on, some of his plants were heterozygous. That meant that they had two different forms of the same gene. Some of them had both the yellow allele and the green allele. And that would mean that they're heterozygous. Sometimes you might see that as written as being hybrid for a specific trait. Some of his plants were homozygous. That was an organism that has only one type of allele. In other words, it would only have the yellow allele or it would only have had the green allele. It would have had two yellow alleles or it would have had two green alleles, one on each of the homologous pairs of chromosomes. We also call these pure breeding or true breeding because all they can pass on is that one allele. A homologous parent can only pass on one type of an allele because it only has one type of an allele. Dominant alleles, like the yellow color, they always appear when they're present. It doesn't matter if it's homozygous for that trait or if it's heterozygous. It will always show up if that allele happens to be dominant in that instance. And it will always hide another allele that is recessive to it. The dominant alleles are able to mask a recessive allele. Recessive alleles, they only are going to show up if they happen to be homozygous, if they are the only alleles that are present within that organism. Because if the organism has another allele that is dominant to it, well, then the dominant allele shows up. So these alleles can only be shown if they happen to be homozygous by themselves. And the green trait, as we saw, skipped a generation, which is very common for recessive traits. Recessive alleles, since they can get masked, a lot of times get hidden in one generation only to appear in another generation. So the genotype, those are the alleles that are present. It could be heterozygous, or it could be homozygous dominant, or it could be homozygous recessive. The phenotype, that is the actual appearance that is taking place. So we can always keep these in mind, the genotype, is the alleles, the phenotype, that is the way that it is going to appear or how those characteristics are going to be expressed. In summary, all offspring inherits its alleles from its parents. That is always going to be the way it happens. Offspring, those alleles from the parents, that's the key. Those alleles are going to interact with each other. So the allele on one of the homologous pairs and the allele on the other homologous pair is going to interact with each other in a specific way. And the way that those alleles are going to interact is going to determine what trait is expressed. That expression of a trait, that is the phenotype of an organism. And the actual alleles that the organism has, that is gonna be its genotype. Next time, we're going to look at how we can calculate and track the percentages or the frequency for which an offspring would obtain or inherit a specific allele from a parent. Till then, be awesome, stay awesome.